My conversation with New Hampshire Governor Kristen Nunu, the leader of the Live Free or Die state, has openly talked about how he's debating entering an already crowded field in 2024. When will he decide and what's the biggest misconception about him? We sat down earlier today for a wide ranging conversation. I know you said there's a 61% chance you're going to run for president. That seems like a really random yet specific number. Why 61%? Well, I was asked on a scale of 1 to 100, and I just thought the 60 would be a little boring. I mean, that's just it. So I came up with 61. I, you know, I didn't know it was going to make news. But, no, I think there's a better than average chance that I end up doing it. I'll make a decision soon, though, in the next few weeks. Because, logistically, you have to put certain things in place. My legislature is coming to a close. New Hampshire's in phenomenal shape. Uh, we, we know we can raise money. We have a lot of financial commitments, which is great. We know we can put people on the ground. We know how to win. It's really just a matter of, of whether it's right for the party, it's right for me, it's right for the family. Um, so we'll see. If you decide to announce, what do you think would be the right timing? Oh, probably in the next few weeks. Mm. Yeah, early June. You really already know, right? You're not ready to announce, but you no, already I don't. know. That, no, no, don't really. Look, I, I, um, I don't, I don't know how to be coy. I'm not very good at that. Um, when I know, and I'm committed to something, I give it 120 percent, and I know that's what it would take, and it would take 120 percent of my effort, not for the next week, but for the next effectively two years. If you were to run for president, what would set you above the rest? Look. Good leadership knows how to get something done, regardless of what hand you're dealt. And I just see too many folks going out there with political stunts or headlines or talking about policy and culture stuff that, okay, it's, it's good to show leadership on it, but, you know, if we're only talking about culture wars, the government's not going to fix a culture war. What do you think you would do if you were president with a debt ceiling right now? Which party is to blame? How do you solve it? Well, look, typically Republicans don't like the idea of raising the debt limit, the, the debt ceiling, because we want to be, to be fiscally conservative. So Republicans came out first and said, you know what, we typically don't like doing this, but we'll be willing, we'll, we'll negotiate, we'll give a little, we'll be willing to raise the debt ceiling. All we ask is that you get this absolute out of control spending a little bit under control. The fact that the president's saying, nope. I mean, the president won because he convinced America he was a negotiator. He convinced America, if the other side gives a little, I can find a common ground. He's proving he can't. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real crisis. You mentioned a little while ago culture wars. I think that that's kind of code for Ron DeSantis. Uh, no. He, no? Oh, no, there's a national culture war going on. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Look, I, Ron is, you know, talks a lot about it. Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy talks about it a lot. Former President Trump talks about it a lot. Folks at their school board meetings talk about it a lot. Folks are upset. And I don't, I don't blame them. I hate wokeism. I hate this cancel culture stuff. I hate this fact that, that we're saying, well, this group might be better than that group, and this group needs to get more privileges than that group. That is very un-American. And it's wrong. It drives our whole system down. Ron DeSantis was in your state not too long ago. You all had a closed-door meeting, obviously closed-door for a reason. Anything that you can share about what was discussed? Sure. Well, I, I, first, I have closed-door. I have meetings with anybody who wants to run for president. RFK Jr. is coming to my office next week. He's running on the Democrat ticket. So I'm kind of the referee of the first in the nation primary in New Hampshire. I want everybody to come in. When it comes to Republicans, I can just tell you what I tell almost all of them. I tell them you got to go north, you got to go to rural parts of the state, uh, you got to engage people one on one. It's not about advertising and money here, it's about shaking someone in his hand and looking them in the eye. We have a, there's a funny joke in New Hampshire. So when, when one guy might say to the other, so are you going to vote for Ron DeSantis? And the other guy goes, well, how do I know? I've only met him twice. That's the mentality. We got to meet you and look you in the eye. We'll get to the policy later. If he were to say, you know what, Chris, I'd love you to be my running mate. Any chance you'd say yes? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's not about Ron. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be honored to be even invited to be the running mate for, for most of the, the, the candidates because they're all friends. I mean, they really are. Mike Pence, I, I've worked, Vice President Pence, we've worked very closely for years, and I have tons of respect for Nikki Haley and Tim Scott, and is just incredible. Uh, he, he, the, what, the barriers he's overcome and, you know, where he's, he's coming, his story is incredible. So these are all really, really good candidates. So um, I'd be honored to even be considered, but nothing I'm thinking about right now. You mentioned just a few of them. I think to date we're at about nine is uh, that a, GOP candidates. Well, is, it's only uh, yeah, it's still that's early. Right, give, that's it, right. give it a little more time in the day to see what happens. <laughs> is there any any part of you that thinks, uh, you know, if I add my name, this is going to increase the likelihood that the Trump wins the sure. nomination? Yeah, yeah, no, there's no, there's, definitely. Now, again, not just that he's going to win the nomination, but am I going to be the 12th guy on the debate yeah. stage, right? I would love to get in the debates. I think that's kind of where I shine. I have a, a little bit of a different personality and approach for, for folks. Nothing really jars me. I've won four elections. I can take a punch and give a punch. When we talk about former President Trump, why, right. do you why are you so convinced that he will not win? He just keeps losing races for Republicans. 
Why would we think that things are magically going to change in, in 24? It's not. And right after the race in 22, after we, we didn't win as big as we should have, Republicans generally said, whoa, that didn't go well. I guess we got to change. we got to pivot here. This isn't working. And there was a, a, a very strong, concerted voice there. Six months later, we've kind of lost our discipline, and we think somehow, magically, it's all going to work out. It's not, guys. And you can't govern if you don't win. He is a loser. But you have said that if he is the nominee, you would vote for him. I'm curious if there's anything he well, could do. Well, I wouldn't vote do, for Biden, that's for sure. <laughs> but is there anything that Trump could do that you would say, all right, uh, Look, that's it, I won't vote I'm not for even, him. Trump is going to, if he if he's on top of that ticket, he's his own entity. It, it, all that's going to matter for me is the bottom of the ticket is how do we get these other candidates that are kind of unfortunately enveloped in what I think is, is, is a very negative message and, and a losing message out of his campaign. You're obviously uh, very vocally a pro-choice. Uh, I'm curious when we talk about the, that 60 percent stat, I believe it was 2022 Republicans who voted said that they were supported banning most abortions. Do you feel like you're out of line with the, with the party? With, no, look, with Republicans will never succeed if we keep talking about national abortion bans. We did that in 22. We got killed on it, guys. We, we got killed. States now have the ability, because of Dobbs, to make their own decisions. It's going to be managed differently in all, all 50 states. And as if you're talking about a national candidacy in terms of presidency, uh, or even the Senate or Congress, I think that the, the best message for Republicans is states can now decide. We'll let them decide. Biggest misconception about you? Look, I'm a pretty staunch conservative. I think maybe people think I'm more moderate than I, than I am, per se, uh, because I'm pro-choice. Um, and because I don't lead with the woke so, uh, cancel culture type stuff. I, I hate the wokeism and I hate cancel culture. But my mission isn't to solve a culture war in this country. My mission is to allow you the opportunities to make better decisions in your community. And I think that might get misconstrued as he's, he's too moderate, he's squishy. No, I'm actually a staunch conservative here. But good Republican conservatism puts the power back in the people's hands. It doesn't have kind of big government Republican solutions. So if anything, maybe that's it, but I don't, you'd have to tell me. Sorry. You are one of eight kids, second yeah. youngest, yeah, right? Yeah. What did you learn growing up that you think is applicable now about having a lot of people mm. around with potentially different ideas and yet yeah. still staying unified? My dad's best advice was, the most valuable thing I can give is my time. Mm. I do all my own grocery shopping. If someone wants, has an issue, they can come right up to me in the cereal aisle or whatever it is and, and tell me what's going on. And do people? Oh, all the time. All the time. And look, there are, some, there are some really tough stories, but that's my job. I have to hear the tough stories. I have to hear what's not working. So I work hard at those things that can impact people the most. And I think that's a fundamental change in the Republican Party that folks like myself and others can bring to the table. We're not just talking about culture wars here. We're talking about results. Our thanks to Governor Sununu for that conversation. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.